Hey, it's Danny Tato, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of a game called Going Medieval. Uh, I've been playing this game for a while. It is in early access, um, so a little asterisk there. Um, but they do have a roadmap here. Uh, by the way, uh, it's uh, developed by Foxy Voxel. Uh, great little uh, outfit. So yeah, uh, they had a new update that just came out like a week ago or so uh, with the environment effects overhaul. Um, they added things like sunlight with the new day-night cycle. They always had one, but they sort of optimized it and changed it up a little bit, um, balanced it, I should say. Um, sunlight will affect things like plants and how they grow. Um, so if a plant, uh, like a crop or something, doesn't get enough sunlight, it will be stunted or give a lot, significantly l uh, less yield uh, when you uh, harvest it. Uh, temperature overhaul, so they changed that, which we'll get more into later. Um, uh, some accumulation effects with uh, rain and snow. Um, as your settlers walk around, they will affect the ground around them, so they'll do organic dirt, dirt paths. And then random quality life improvements um and then their future updates here that they have um i'm not sure honestly i haven't paid enough attention to know if these are going in order or not um, my guess is yes probably just based on looking at them um with some of these sprinkled in of course um but yeah they just added uh you know some of these things uh they added some more social interactions as well which is pretty cool uh the other big updates they've done recently are the animal husbandry and sort of taming of wildlife and things like that um which adds a whole nother dimension to to the agriculture kind of system they got going on so a lot lot planned here uh really excited for it so let's start a new game uh they have their three uh modes standard peaceful survival pretty self-explanatory peaceful there's no attack survival there's uh how do they say it? yeah just they happen more frequently um and the difficulty increases no matter what um where here the difficulty is adapting as you go along so depending on how you know uh advanced you are will will change sort of how the sieges that come um from time to time uh and then they have two starting scenarios uh the, the one here is the lone wolf which is uh tough because a is only one settler and B, uh, it, you start in winter, which is even tougher now with the, some of the new changes they've made recently. Um, but I, I will do one of those soon, but I do want to give you guys a look at the, the new life uh, version, which is just the standard three uh, settlers come out and start a new life. Um, the cool thing is, out of the box, you can make your own scenario, um, change all kinds of stuff, add conditions, whatever, um, if you're into that. So that's pretty cool. You have a lot of replayability with that. So we're going to do a new life, keep it as vanilla as possible here. Um, and then we get this pretty cool screen where we pick where we want to, uh, I guess, embark, if we want to use a dwarf fortress term. Um, and there's usually going to be three standard starts. You have the mountain um, start, which is plentiful uh, in limestone, gold, iron, and silver, um, but not as much fertile soil, clay, and vegetation. So you're kind of balancing things out here. Uh, hillside is going to be uh, in between the uh, mountain and the valley. Uh, so uneven terrain suitable for a good defensive position, a fair amount of limestone and clay, moderate amount of fertile uh, soil and vegetation and then you have your valley plentiful vegetation fertile soil and clay moderate amounts of limestone lesser amounts of iron and salt you also have more mild winters but really fierce summers uh, and if you look over here you have harsh winters in the mountains with mild summers and then it's kind of vanilla i guess in the hillside i'm actually gonna do a hillside uh, one i usually do valley just to keep it very simple um, but let's go with let's go with hillside um and uh we're gonna of course go with oops no apostrophe Aw. That's unfortunate. Potatoes down. Uh, we'll go with that. And map size, I'm going to go to medium just because I like having a little more space. Uh, I tend to find I run out of, like, not run out of, but I, I'm always looking for more trees to cut down. And I don't like cutting down all of them in my little area. Um, so if I have more space, I got more trees, hopefully. So, uh, And then you can change your sort of shield flag banner thingy here. Um, I'm just going to keep... The tree is fine. We'll go with that uh, and move forward. All right. Uh, this screen should look pretty familiar. You know, if you played RimWorld or uh, I guess to a lesser extent, Dwarf Fortress, uh, you, you pick your starter, uh, starting settlers here with their skills, um, some perks and traits, uh, a background is written out, just really cool, uh, some physical characteristics. Um, so, yeah, pretty standard. Uh, I believe this goes up from 0 to 20 uh, for each skill. And then over here you have your, uh, how passionate they are, uh, about the, uh, specific skill. And that changes, of course, their, uh, experience growth. Um, they also get a little mood buff when they're doing something they really like to do. So, um, it's pretty cool. This is a terrible start, this one. Uh, first of all, I tend to find the more perks, the worse it is, um, because there's usually some pretty bad ones. Uh, 
Evoda is extremely candid and doesn't suffer fools gladly. Those who can't handle the unvarnished truth tend to steer clear. So, you know, negative to speechcraft. She's got a better bargain, which is weird. Uh, and then a bunch of negative social interaction chances. She's a hedonist. Uh, she's infirm. But she's fair and congenial. I don't know how you're congenial and ruthless. Interesting. Um, I'm just going to reroll her once just because that's a pretty terrible character. All right, hot-blooded and winsome, great, we'll take it. Uh, I'm not gonna min-max min everything here, we'll just kinda go with what we get. Um, and it looks fairly balanced here, nothing looks too bad. Uh, construction is pretty bad, we might reroll one person to get some construction. Uh, you're laggardly, let's see if anyone's just awful. Chili, that's fine. You're an angry drunk. Uh, movement speed kinda sucks. Let's, let's get rid of that. What are you, you're a cannibal, nice, ruthless, early bird. And you are better if you drink. That's interesting. But I want you to be better at construction. So I'm gonna roll you like. Let's get a construction person. Five. Eh. Oh, no one can build anything here. All right, ten. Good. Sold. And look at that. You're robust. All right. So we got Mabelie, Mab Mabile. I don't know. Mer Merald. Oh man, these names are tough. And then Godric. Um, I could rename them, but we'll leave it for now. Um, and yeah. So that's how we're gonna start, and we'll go with that. So this summarizes sort of everything. We're starting Tato's Town, blah, blah, blah. We're on a hillside. I'm going to turn off tutorial tips for now just because they're a little bit annoying and they pop up pretty frequently. Although it's great if you're, you know, obviously learning everything. And I, it, there's a lot to learn. It's a really interesting take on settlement builders. Uh, it reminds me uh, a little bit of a game. Oh, now I'm not going to remember what it was called. Um, was it No Moria? But it was the other one that had like the little LV looking dudes with the blocky kind of animations. Um, but the fact that you, you're building your own structures, you're not placing buildings, you're actually, you know, being the architect uh, of the buildings, which is pretty cool. A um, little bit of a loading. I don't remember this having this big of a loading time at the beginning, but uh, with all the new systems, maybe that's it. So. Uh, a new life. The plague had ravaged the British Isles, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake, until millions went to an early grave, and those left standing were plunged into poverty, brutally scarred by the horrors that they had witnessed. Nothing would ever be the same again. In springtime of the year 1353, our three settlers set off in the wilderness to claim a piece of the land as their own, as was their right, in the eyes of God and under the law. Here they may lay down the foundations for some kind of future. Perhaps hope will follow. Merald is confident, defiant even. We will make this work. We will take our share of land. We will build there and we will defend it. Many have tried. Some have fallen, beset by bandits, defeated by drought. Uh, yet many have also prevailed. Have faith. The place we found will stand centuries from now. Our descendants will be there still. Into a landscape of rolling hills and ancient crumbling forts, the companions trekked. Each ascent rewarded Godric with a view that stretched for many leagues. No enemy approach would go unseen, he thought. They built a camp that would, in time, become the settlement of Tato's Town. Uh, and then it says, like, an excerpt from a book, blah, 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 blah. They go with the year 1365. So the idea is there was a plague, hit the British Isles, and then these guys sort of set out to start their own town in the sort of, you know, torn up sort of landscape. Um, cool thing is uh, the uh, flavor text changes slightly depending on where you start out and the names and everything like that. So pretty cool. Uh, all right, so we're going to pause right at the beginning and just kind of take a look around. All right, so taking a look around, uh, just gets a kind of feel for the landscape so you can see the hills up here. There's not actually, we're kind of in our own little valley anyways. It does descend down, I guess, down this way. Um, but you can see it's kind of like, you know, voxel-like um, in the way uh, that the train is set up. Uh, you have cool mushrooms sitting around, uh, some, what are these, red currants. Uh, you got your trees, uh, all kinds of resources lying around. It's really great. There's wildlife and stuff. So yeah, so this is our area where we need to start Tato's Town. Um, so first few things here. Uh, we are going to unforbid all of the stuff we brought and a couple of these other things. Some of these are like clay piles and dirt piles and stuff we may use later. Some are like sticks and stuff. Um, just so we're not shorting ourselves of stuff that's around. Um, all right. So we did that. Uh, first thing I like to do is place some sort of stockpile once I find where I want to uh, settle. And I, I think, honestly, like right here is actually nice. There's a little clearing, which I don't know if is default now. I, I feel like it wasn't like this before, where it'd be like you start off in a clearing. Uh, but I like this. There's by based on the 
terrain here, you can tell. Um, if you look over uh, over here, you can see like if my mouse is over something, it says it's soil or whatever. Over here, this is rocky soil. Uh, and then over here, this is salt. This is all salt, there's some coal. So it's all pretty useful for like industry stuff. And then it's rocky soil, which I'm guessing is either stone or like limestone or something. Uh, more coal over here. So we have a lot of this stuff uh, lying around, which is nice. Um, so I'm just gonna put a default stockpile uh, just somewhere nearby. I'm gonna change my view just slightly here. Uh, so I should put our default stockpile like here, and we can build around this and then mine around it as well. Um, and then we're gonna start off with some houses, uh, and I'm gonna do kind of individual ones. So uh, let's start over here, I guess. Let's see. Uh, do I want one more? Or do I want to do it like this? No, this is fine. Good. Sometimes going over the top is a little bit easier. Uh, yeah, I like this. It's fine. All right, so that works, and we're gonna do the same thing a couple of times here. Just get it done. Did I do that? I did that one short, I think. A little bit longer here. That looks right. And one more here. Okay, so you can. Did I do it again? Oh man. That's pretty awful. Try that again. There. Symmetry is everything. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two. Yeah, the angle is just off. That's all it does. Okay. Uh, so that's my sort of skeletal skeletal kind of outline. Uh, we're obviously going to want to add doors. So we're going to do that kind of on all of them at the same time. And of course, windows, you know, bring in some light, make them feel good. Uh, I don't know the uh, how big the effects are on that. I'm actually only going to do one window on this side because windows do take a little bit longer to build. Um, oops, I forgot a couple other windows. All right, so now we have a nice proper setup with doors and windows, and the last thing we're missing is a roof. Now, what's cool is you can build buildings that go up several Z levels. Um, so I could put in like a ladder here and then make a floor and we make a whole, you know, another set of walls and make a second story. I'm not gonna do that now, maybe later. I can maybe like connect all three of these with like a second floor dining area it might be kind of cool. Um, and the same goes for going underneath uh, underground. Um, so if I hold control here and then with my scroll wheel scroll, You'll see eventually that I'm now going down Z levels and then going up Z levels. Um, so it's pretty cool. Uh, very, very, very intuitive and interesting build system here. Uh, so the next thing I need is a roof. Uh, I'm not going to go with anything fancy in terms of, uh, uh, you know, second stories or anything like that. You just kind of click and drag and make sure you land on the right points. I do find the roofs to be a little bit finicky if you have a larger building. Um, but I'm not, you know, I am fairly new. I mean, I've been playing this game for a while, but not like getting a ton of hours. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just changing the way the look of some of this is. It's nice you can change it without having to like change the actual, um, what it's actually made of, the, the material. Um, so just minor change. I, I decided I liked recently where the logs go across. You'll see it when it's built. Um, all right, so they're gonna start building that. But before they do that, I wanna do a couple modifications to their schedule. Uh, by default, I tend to find they need one more hour of sleep. Um, otherwise they start complaining about being exhausted. And then the other thing I like to do is I like to give them like two hours of leisure, kind of right in the middle of the day and do it for all of them. That way they share the time where they're doing that and they can get more social time and things like that, you know, just positives. And otherwise I set it to anything. Um, and that's kind of the way I like to do it. Uh, unless they have some weird thing like they work better at night, like a night owl type thing. So we'll do that. Uh, and then jobs. Now this should also look familiar, it's very RimWorld. Um, so priorities go left to right. Uh, of course, going with a high, uh, lower value. So one is done first, five is done last. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at some of the skills. We don't have a great doctor. Our best doctor is right here. So I'm just gonna turn everyone off and then you're gonna be doctor number one. Uh, that's Mabel. I'm calling her Mabel, I don't care. Uh, convalesce uh, is like, you know, lying down when you're hurt. So I'm gonna set that to one as well. Sometimes I change that if they have like a bruise and they lie down and I need them to do stuff, I'll, I'll get rid of that. But by default, I leave it like that. Uh, hunting I don't care about right now. I'm just gonna 
set it to five for everybody because I don't really care. All right, construction is very important early on and I'm glad I got Mabel. So she's gonna do it as her first and you're not gonna build anything because you're terrible at it. So no guess that's no one with a passion. I wish I had a passion here uh, for construction, but I don't. Uh, all right, growing, 11, 15. Oh, construct anger. All right, well, you're gonna be my grower, I think. And you don't do anything. What are you, what are you good at? What, what would you say you do here? You have a passion for botany, but you're terrible at it. You're okay with animal handling. You can mine. Uh, you suck at cutting plants, but you have a passion for it. And I do need someone to be cutting plants that's not doing other stuff. So I'm actually gonna set you to that as number one and maybe long-term this will be positive. Uh, cooking. All right, so you never cook. You cook in an emergency and you need to cook first thing. Crafting, I don't care about, we'll deal with it later. Pretty much all this we'll deal with later. Uh, I just don't want you tailoring for sure. I don't want you doing any carpentry. 10, two, but you have a passion to leave it. And then research, um, I'm probably just, you're, you're probably gonna be the least busy early on. So I'm just gonna bump that up a little bit and give you a haul as well. Uh, we're not gonna be able to research right away cause I have to build the research bench or a workshop or whatever it's called. Um, so hauling would be nice and important to get everything into our stockpile uh, over here. Um, okay, so now they have their priorities, they have their schedule. Uh, for management, this is like changing some basic things about uh, what equipment they hold, what type of things they eat, uh, things like that. So melee zero, marksman six, melee seven, marksman six, melee 12, marksman four. So your melee is 12, so I'm gonna set you to melee. You had the best marksman, so I'm gonna give you ranged. I think I made that. I think I made this one. No, I don't think I did, maybe not. Maybe it doesn't save it across saves. I made one just like that. Uh, and then, I forget what you were. You were basically your ranged as well. So did I want you to be ranged? Your melee seven, you know what? Let's say to melee. Uh, with you can have shields, you don't get one because you're doing the other thing. Uh, set you all to all hot gear is fine. And then all armor is fine. And then all food, all stimulus is fine. The only stimulus they have right now is beer or different variations of alcohol, I should say. Um, all right, so there's that. So we got that done. Let's go ahead and get time moving. Uh, we're gonna speed it up. It is done by default fairly slow. <laughs> Excuse me, fairly slow. So I'm gonna go at uh, level two speed here. And then I'm gonna start setting up some jobs for cutting down some trees, and they'll do that. So you can see them, here they start building. It's really nice, so again, you can see the difference in the walls versus the windows, it takes a lot longer. But they get it done. And yeah, uh, looking at our settlers, there's a few things you can see. You get their basic, you know, who they are and what skills and perks they have and whatnot. Uh, inventory, things like that, like stats, so 0.3 DPS, but he hasn't equipped anything yet. Uh, his skills, general attributes, so you get actual raw numbers for some of these things, which is pretty cool, um, or percentages. Uh, his actual stats here on like what he needs. Uh, he is large, so it's slower, but he does better unarmed damage and melee weapon damage, and he's middle-aged, um, so that changes some things as well. Mood, you can see how he's feeling and why. Hit points, blood, consciousness, how hungry he is, pain, and then recent social interactions. Um, she has some worryingly poor construction. <laughs> He's upset about that. Uh, Settled so together plus 25. So yeah, all kinds of cool stuff there. You can set their, uh, how aggressive they are when they come across hostiles and things like that. So it's all pretty cool. Um, in addition to this, I'm gonna set some harvest things here just so we have some food kicking around uh we carry i think we do come with some meals um uh, but there's not a ton there's not really no no there's more yeah so we come with 12 so far um and some other stuff components some cabbages uh some ale of course must have uh and then i'm also gonna get some of this hay uh hay is super important early on not so much later but what is this? The pile. Okay. The carcass here. I don't have a butcher table yet, but we'll get on that once we get some stuff built. So you can see they're putting up the roof now. Looks super nice. Of course. What's that? Oh, 
about food reserves. Yeah, well, we don't really have a stockpile. Uh, we also have a cat. It's pretty cool. Send out the cat. Pretty cool. And then we also come with two goats. So we have a, few, a breeding pair, which is nice. All right, so chop some trees down. We probably need to chop a few more, is my guess. Um, we may not need it for these houses, but we'll need it once these are done. Uh, if you ever don't have enough wood around um, and you have uh, blueprints sitting sitting there, they'll turn orange with like a little exclamation point. So you know like, hey, the reason why this isn't built is there's not enough resources needed for it. So, uh, so that's a nice little, you know, very obvious kind of change. You'll see it at some point. I'm sure we'll run out of some sort of resource. Um, so view is really important in this game. Obviously, we talked about how you have your Z levels, you know, going up and down. Um, but the other thing that's kind of nice that you can do here is there's a toggle to hide the roofs. Um, and that way you can see inside each building, but you're still at the high kind of Z level. Um, and I like to do that when I'm... So I'll, I do it all the time, but also for when I'm building furniture. Um, so I'm going to rotate this, just put this right kind of in the middle. So they have their beds. And hopefully they start building those. Again, those are little basic hay sleeping spots uh, that take 15 hay. So that's why you want to make sure you just grab a couple extra hay um, so you can build those beds, have it for, you know, you can make hay, uh, roofs out of hay, things like that. So uh, there's so much stuff to mine here. It's so different than the valley starts they usually do. It's pretty cool. All right, so we got our three houses that they're working on. Uh, they are gonna go to bed at what time? 22? Yeah, 2200. Uh, and they're at 1600. I think we should mostly be able to finish at least. I might force them to make the beds at least so they can sleep in a bed, even though they're gonna be sleeping outside if they don't finish some of the roofs and things like that. But we'll see. Luckily, uh, a lot of our wood is right next to where we're building. Uh, and then we're using these stick piles as well to build the, to build the, uh, yeah, I like how you have no beds and it's like, everything's fine. Then you build one, they're like, not enough. Um, but yeah, the stick piles are, are making these sort of like, uh, I forget what they call it, a wicker roof. That's nice. Uh, all right, building another bed. So that would be two that'll be done. See them waving at each other, having small talk. I guess some the upper side done. Uh, you're drinking. All right, Dodger. Oh, tell me like you're drunk or something. Oh yeah, uh, that gives me the opportunity to talk about the uh, room system here. Um, where is it? Yeah, show overlay of rooms detected. So it, it actively tries to do- oh, we're out of sticks it looks like. No, we have some. Really? Oh, huh. alright. Put down a couple more trees. Uh, it actively detects sort of like each enclosed space that you have and what you have in it with the furniture you have. Um, so a chamber is a, basically a bedroom, obviously, um, because of the impressiveness, how spacious it is, the wealth and the aesthetic value. Um, I don't have floors in here, so that's kind of a big thing, um, or any other furniture, but a chamber is much better than like a shared sleeping space, um, or something like that, um, which is really nice. All right. Everyone has a bed. That's nice. I'm going to turn this overlay off. It's annoying. Um, actually turn it back on real quick up here. You can see the different types of rooms. Yeah. You can have kitchen, workshop, library, uh, the two different churches, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, the chamber, we talked about a shared chamber, a great hall, infirmary, and a spare room, which is kind of like miscellaneous, right? Um, and yeah, there's different bonuses to having those. So you want to pay attention to those because you can get like a, a bonus to like production in a production room, right? Um, or things like that. Uh, so it's it's nice to pay attention to that and, uh, going forward. Uh, a couple other things I want to queue up. Let's do uh, a backgammon game for fun. And then we are going to need a little churchy area, so... Look over here. Oh, it doesn't need to be that big. Uh, we'll do it wider than taller. That's what we'll do. I'll just cancel these two here. Door. A couple of windows. That'll do. And then I'm actually going to do hay roofs for these. Uh, just to get a different idea. Residential will have like the wicker, and then non will have that. Um, and then I want one just like this. I wish there was a kind of copy and paste thing, and I don't believe there is yet. How far did it go? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And later on, we'll start doing bigger, more complex buildings uh, upstairs and things like that, which is a lot of fun. It, it really is trying to design it and make it work uh, within the systems of the game is, is a thing. Uh, and speed up time a little bit because I think everyone's sleeping. All right, so there's two. Uh, I built it backwards. There are two religions um, that a colonist can be a part of. There's the Oak Brethren, which is basically like, you know, pagan. Right. Uh, and then Restitutionist is the other one. And uh, that's kind of like the Catholic, I would say, maybe. Uh, and you can see, once it gets built, you'll see there's like a cross and stuff like that in here. This is all about, like, nature. Um, but yeah, the so our colonists, or our settlers, I should say, can be different. Let's see. Right here? Yeah. So they can have not only which one they are, but how sort of fervent or uh huh interesting i've never seen this error pop up a wild fox messed up their move position hopefully that goes away um so they can be like sort of how into their religion they are uh so their religion there's a little bit so they're practicing it's not like a huge deal for them uh practicing rest restitution is a practicing oak brethren here um for mabel and then Merald is also practicing. So no one's super fervent, no one's sort of like, eh, don't really care, take it or leave it. Um, so yeah, it's just a thing. They will try to like convert each other and say stuff like that, um, which happens. Um, they don't like seeing each other's shrines, I, I believe is a thing. So I uh, try to separate them out a little bit. So, uh, But it's just another sort of layer of sort of making the... I, I can't clear this, okay. Uh, another layer of depth, you know, for your characters. It's pretty cool. Uh, once we do that, I'm also going to queue up um, just a little bit around our storage. I am going to make it a little bit bigger than I showed. Uh, I'm sorry, than I made the actual stockpile. Because I do plan on growing it a little bit. And this building will likely turn into a multi-story building whether it goes up or down, I'm not sure. This actually might be too big for my system. Nope. Perfect amount. Doors. Uh, this is a building I like to put several doors on just because people will be coming from all directions. And I like to make it very close to our production building, which I'll probably put over here from the looks of things. So, so there you have it. Uh, going medieval, early access. We got, uh, oh, they built the back game already. That's pretty awesome. Uh, we got beds, a couple houses. We're building our little shrine areas and then our storage facility. Next up will be production. Uh, and we'll actually start looking at... Oh, I need a campfire. Do that real quick. Uh, actually, it's a bad spot for it. Um, so we'll start looking at a production building, getting our research bench going, getting some research. Uh, and then we'll start uh, possibly mining a little bit and just preparing for some of the research we're going to do um, to help us do some stuff with what we mine. So uh, it's going to be pretty important. Let's queue up a couple of things and then... I think it's gonna do it for this episode. Get a couple of mushrooms as well. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying it. If you do, you know, feel free to give it a like just so I know that people are actually like enjoying it. If not, you know, we'll do other things. So not a big deal. Uh, all right, guys. Thanks for watching.